A lot of times with distributions, we're interested in whether a value is unusual or not. <clears throat> when we get into hypothesis testing in the very last chapter, that's going to be an important part of the courses and for that chapter. Is the value we have, is it unusual? Is it something we expected? Okay, so we can use the empirical rule to judge a little bit about whether things are unusual. Okay, so the empirical rule says that about 68% of the observations will be within one standard deviation of the mean. This is a Back in the other section, we talked about most, a lot of the data, and this is 68%. So it's actually 68%, which is a lot of the data, is within one standard deviation of the mean. 95% will be within two standard deviations of the mean, and then nearly all the observations will be within three standard deviations of the mean. So if we look at this as a picture, you can see your mean is going to be in the middle, because if you have a symmetric distribution, okay? Two-thirds of it is here in this first hump, so between the mean minus a standard deviation and the mean plus a standard deviation. 95% go from the mean minus two standard deviations up to the mean plus two standard deviations. And then on the other page, it said almost all, but it's actually about 99.7%, go from the mean minus three standard deviations to the mean plus three standard deviation. So let's look at an example. Okay, so if the mean body weight for women between 18 and 25 years old is 134 pounds and the standard deviation is 26 pounds and we assume that we have a mound shaped distribution that I can know that about 98% of women in this age group weigh between, well the 68% corresponds to one standard deviation away from the mean. So I would take the 134 and subtract 26 pounds and the 134 and add 26 pounds. Okay. So 68% of women between the ages of 18 and 25 years old weigh between 108 pounds and 168 pounds. And similarly, I can do the same thing for the 95%. Remember, that's within two standard deviations of the mean. So I'm going to take the 134 minus two standard deviations. Remember, a standard deviation is 26. Here's your mean minus two standard deviations, which is 26, and then your mean plus two standard deviations. So about 95% of women between 18 and 25 years old weigh between 82 and 186 pounds. And then almost all, which again, that's 99.7%, weigh between, and this time I need to change it so I'm three standard deviations from the mean. Okay, so that would be between 56 and 212. Okay, now you notice this 56 seems awful low, right? But remember, there's... It, it's well past even the where 95% where weigh. So there really aren't hardly anyone out there as far as women weighing 56 pounds. Okay, so if we're going to use it, we, we know the high temperatures in San Francisco follow a unimodal and symmetric distribution with a mean of 65 degrees and a standard deviation of 8 degrees. Okay, so what's the range of temperatures that includes the middle 95% of high temperature days in San Francisco? Okay, 95% is the amount of data that's between negative 2 and 2, or two standard deviations below the mean to two standard deviations above the mean. So I need to take 65 and subtract two standard deviations. Remember, a standard deviation in this case is 8, and 65 and add two standard deviations. Right. So 95% of all days in San Francisco have high temperatures between 49 and 81 degrees. It would mean, might be a nice place to live if you like consistent temperatures all year round. Okay, um, so here's another example. So daily cash register receipts at a local store follow a mound shaped distribution with a mean of $9,200 and a standard deviation of $1,500. So a new employee was hired and the day that they started the store took in $4,500. Should, should the manager be concerned? Okay, so if it's within one standard deviation, that's where 68% of the data falls. It's not a big deal, right? But the thing is, when we start looking, if you end up being far away from the mean, then it's less likely to occur. Okay, so in this case, if you notice, it's actually more than three standard deviations from the mean. We also know that 9.7% of the data is within three standard deviation. This is outside that. So this has to be one of those occurrences that very rarely occur. So you kind of have two choices. You can either say, well, it was just a really slow day, had nothing to do with the new employee, or you might be concerned that actually, yes, the new employee took some money 
for themselves instead of putting it in a pot. So that would be the decision you have to make. But you can use this idea to see if that which way would be plausible. And it's it's possible. It, it's possible it was a very slow day, but it's probably more probable that as the manager should be concerned that it was such a low receipt total for the day. Okay. Another thing we talk about is z-score. So your z-score measures the number of standard deviations the value is from the mean. Okay? And there's no units on a z-score and they're just actually called standard units. Okay? And you can use a z-score just to compare different things. Uh, my example is actually from, from baseball but also you can use it to compare an ACT and an SAT score. Okay, so we know Nick Swisher is an outfielder for Cleveland. He had a batting average of 246 in 2013. So if we want to find the z-score for his batting average, okay, we need to know the mean and the standard deviation of all batting averages in 2013. Okay? So remember over here I said a z-score is the number of standard deviation the value is from the mean. So if I just subtract the mean from the value, that just tells me how far it is. It doesn't tell me in terms of standard deviation. So then I need to take that value and divide it by your standard deviation to get how, how many standard deviations his batting average is from the mean. Okay, Just a reminder of symbols here, this X is actually going to be the observation. So in this case, case it's Nick Swisher's batting average. The X with the bar over top of it, just called X bar, is the mean of your data. And the letter S, member stands for the standard deviation. These were symbols that were, we talked about back in section 3.1. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take Nick Swisher's batting average, that's the X in my formula, minus the mean, which I told you right here was 2.72, and divide it by the standard deviation, which is 0 0.0278, and that gets me negative 0.935. Make sure when you're doing this on the calculator, you either have to put parentheses around your numerator, or make sure you press equals or enter, depending on which type of calculator you're using, before you do the division. <clears throat> because you needed to do the subtraction first, then the division. Okay. Now, you notice the standard deviation is negative. The negative is coming out because his value is below the mean. Okay. So you should always get in the habit of writing a sentence that represents what this number means. Okay. So Nick Swisher's batting average is negative .935 standard deviations below the mean. So he's almost one standard deviation below the mean. Remember, 68% of the data fall within one standard deviation below the mean to one standard deviation above the mean. So he actually still fits in that 68%, middle 68% that's a standard deviation above or below the mean. Make sure you practice this on your calculator before you continue on, just to make sure you understand about pressing equals or doing the subtraction first before you do the division. Okay, so we can also use z-scores to compare. So in 2013, Miquel Cabrera led the MLB in batting with a .348 batting average. And Dan, and I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, Dan Ugla had the worst batting average at .179. Okay, that's of all those batters that had at least 425 at-bats. Okay, so we're gonna, again, we have the same mean and standard deviation from our batting averages for 2013. Okay. And I want to know which of those two is more unusual, to have that high, that, this high of an average for Cabrera or that low of an average for Eugla. Okay, so first I calculated Miguel Cabrera's batting average. That's this down here. Again, it's his value, which is the .348, minus the mean. Okay, and then make sure, again, that you do the subtraction first. So press enter or equals on your calculator, and before then divide it by the standard deviation. So he came out to 2.73 standard deviations above the mean because it's positive. Um, usually we consider something unusual that's more than two standard deviations from the mean. So his batting average actually is unusual okay, because it's outside of that two standard deviations from the mean. Okay? Now if I look at Dan Ugla's, I do the same thing. 0.179, which is Dan's batting average, minus the mean batting average, and divide that by the standard deviation of the batting averages. And he comes out negative 3.345. Again, it's negative because his average is below the mean. His average is very unusual because it's 
even well without within, it's not even within the three standard deviations of the mean, which is where almost all of the batting averages are. Okay, so what does this tell us? Well, since Dan's value is more unusual, its z score is further from zero, right? That means that his batting average is more unusual than Cabrera's batting average. Okay, um, if, you, if you think about it, what's the z score for the mean? So you could even pause the video and think about this. So the, the z-score for the mean will actually end up being zero because this value would be the mean and this value would also be the mean. So the numerator would have the same two values you'd be subtracting that would give you zero. Okay, so the mean actually has a z-score of zero. Okay, so we can also compare, let's compare Ty Cobb and Ted Williams. Okay, so Ty Cobb batted in 1911.420 and Ted Williams in 1941's batting average was .406. Okay. If you notice, there's not a lot of difference between the means in the two years for their batting averages, but there is some difference in the standard deviation. Okay. In 1911, the standard deviations were spread out a little more than they were in 1941. Okay. Sometimes there's a difference in spread in, in the different even decades or years just because of the quality of the pitching and the quality of the batting that you get. Okay, so first we calculate Ty Cobb's batting average. Okay, again, it's, it's his value minus the mean. And I remember, look here, I'm using the mean for 1911 because that's when he played. And the divided by the standard deviation from 1911. So he, again, is very unusual because he's four standard deviations from the mean. He's actually more than four. I do the same thing for Ted Williams. Okay, and you notice that even though he had the smaller batting average, his batting average is more unusual for the decade that he played. Okay, next we're going to talk about some summaries for skewed distributions. The first two sections we talked about symmetric distributions, and in the next video I'll talk about what we do for skewed distributions.